You are watching the fastest growing fitness, entertainment, and health podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Now, Here check this we out. Come. We have a lot of fun in today's episode. Uh, we actually answered fitness and health questions from viewers and listeners just like you guys. So people actually write in um, on our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media. Uh, they go underneath the Qua meme and then they ask a question. We pick the best ones that we like and then we answer them in today's episode. So let me go over what we went through in today's episode. By the way, make sure you subscribe to this channel, uh, like uh, this video, share this with your friends and turn on notifications because we give away stuff all the time, but only to people who click on there first. Be I'll go, first. I'll tell you about that a little more later in this intro. So let me tell you what happened in today's episode. We open up by talking about cholesterol. Did you know that cholesterol actually can help you build muscle? It's absolutely true. Mind blown. I've been talking about it for years, uh, and studies are coming out to support it. Then we talked about Justin's mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to want to know all yeah. about- <laughs> There's a lot we covered. His mom. It's a good time. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about uh, the lessons that we learned working out, um, and our most valuable lessons had nothing to do with developing the sexy physiques that you see now on your camera. Uh, on, on your screen today. Um, then we talked about HubSpot. This is a great company to invest in. They just bought The Hustle um, and their share exploded. We like to talk about investments sometimes. Then I talk about craniopagus twins. These are twins connected at the brain. Really interesting stuff. We talked about Beyond Meat. This is another investment opportunity. they they working with Pepsi. So you got two very unhealthy companies working together. <laughs> yeah, uh, what a combo. And the value went through the roof. By the way, sometimes we talk about uh, sponsors in our podcast. If you ever want to see if there's a discount, uh, check the links below. And if there is, you can click on the link and you can get, I don't know, 15 to 25% off uh, usually. Uh, then we got into the questions. The first one, somebody wants to know what's in my bag. Okay, so the guys tease me all the time about my supplement bag, because yes, I do have a supplement bag, hmm. and they cornered me. So today I revealed what was inside you the bag. You got rid of all the paraphernalia. Don't That's worry. right. Uh, the next question, this person wants to know if they can build muscle mass uh, when their weights only go up to 50 pounds. So apparently it's too light for them, so we talk about strategies there. The next question, this person wants to know how to adjust their macros and calories when their weight loss plateaued. So we talk about strategies with diet on how to make the weight loss continue. And yes, I know you could just keep cutting calories, but that's not super effective long term. So we talk about other strategies. Um, and then the final question, this person's asking about hypermobility or instability. So they're really flexible, but uh, they're not very stable. So we give some strategies there. By the way, uh, if you are one of the first 30 people to leave a comment underneath this video and we like your comment, we pick it, we'll pick our favorite one out of 30, you can actually get a free t-shirt. That's right. We'll mail you a free Mind Pump t-shirt. By the way, this is made with uh, special yak fur that was blessed by Himalayan monks. It's so soft. Or cotton. You'll get an either cotton shirt or the blessed Himalayan yak fur shirt. So it's going to be one of those things, probably the cotton one, though. It's very be spiritual. be honest with you. Also, uh, all month long, we are running a promotion on uh, two of our more popular programs called the Phase 2 Bundle. So it includes MAPS Performance. This is a sports-inspired workout program. Gives you functional strength and mobility. We combine that with MAPS Aesthetic, which is a bodybuilder workout program. So it's the best of both worlds. You get both programs. Now, normally, if you get each program individually, they will cost you 300 bucks uh, for both of them. But right now, you can get them both for $79.99. By the way, this promotion is only going on this month in February. Okay, so after February, it'll be totally over. So $79.99, you get access for life to both programs. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. Just go to uh, go to mapsfebruary.com. That's M A P S F E B R U A R Y dot com. Enjoy the show. How does it feel to be the fat guy of the group, Sal? Huh? Yeah. How, does it feel How did I get that? Tides of turn. Yeah. How did yeah. I get that? Uh, I mean, Justin's looking Miss pretty Tom. lean and mean. I, I think I got to stop with the fat jokes on him. Mm. I mean, it's it's all coming I'm, together. I just dropped seven pounds, bro. How the hell am I fat? Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, less fat now. That's huh? good. Yeah. I don't know. I tell you what, we have a now that we have an audience on uh, on YouTube that's really growing. Um, you guys can look in the camera <laughs> and in the comments tell us who the fattest is. You're ah. bro, you're gonna lose that one, dude. You think have, so? Have you been watching this? Yeah, look, yeah. look how chiseled just, this you look is. Like Did you I just got, screw myself? You look like you got stung by a bunch of bees, dude. Damn. <laughs> In my biceps? Yeah, it's just everywhere. Oh, uh, everywhere else? Yeah. Oh, man. That's All meat, no bones. You know what I mean? He had that, that, uh, I'm not a, I'm not that first vlog that we did. You were uh, like this. You got your, your eggs and your flour and your milk and your sugar. Uh, and you, you make a cake. 
And without one ingredient, it's disgusting. So uh, we're all an ingredient to this cake that we call Mind Pump. Oh, yeah. So uh, we started Mind Pump like five years ago. I, and I'm, I, I started snoring while I was awake now. Not, e not even when I sleep. <laughs> That's messed up. You know, it's, it's you were talking about that the other day. Actually, Katrina was telling me that she's like, "Man, you have been snoring." It's the weight, dude. As soon as the, the I'm pushing the weight the same way, yeah, and my I just start snoring. It's and, uh, the you if guys side snoring. You got an issue. That was me, dude. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's when I said I got to do something about it. You know, you know what it is. I told you guys about this a long time ago. Mm. Your tongue gets fatter. <laughs> this is oh yeah, that was mind blowing. This is what the studies. This is what they say. They say you snore more when you gain weight. Yeah. Because your tongue gets it fatter. Gets in the way. That's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Tongue fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, you ever hear like, um, uh, what was the name? Biggie? You know, when he would rap or Big Pun? You don't even need to see him. You can hear it. You can oh, hear yeah. in their voice. Like, they're big. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. there's some they're big boys. There's some obesity in that tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's going on right now. Laying some fat tracks. Dude, it's crazy. You read that a couple of years ago. I remember when you read that study, right? About the fat tongue. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what it said, though. What did it say? Do you remember? That's what it said. That's what it said, that your, your tongue gets fatter. I know, but <laughs> like how much? Oh, I don't know, dude. It didn't have a, didn't have a percentage of no. how much when you put weight on? No. How do they test that? Anyway, there's no calipers you could do that, right? Mm. It's uh, the way your tongue underwater. Well, I mean, <laughs> stick I'm your tongue in the glass. No, I'm sure you can measure like circumference of it before and after, right? Yeah. I'm sure that's how they figured that out. Oh, I imagine man. that's how they studied it. Hey, speaking mm. of, uh, of, uh, of of cool stuff, um, not that being fat's cool, but anyway, um, I am seeing way more articles now talking about um, the anabolic muscle building effects of cholesterol. Oh, Finally, yeah. oh. well, I mean, how long have I been talking about that? Shout yeah. out to T Nation, right? Yeah, they they, they just love, did an article, right? They love some mind pump. I swear. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got it. It's going on, boys. I think we got it. It's going on, boys. Here. We know you're listening. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, you know, I, we've been talking about that maybe since it's Doug. day one. Not that it, now that we discovered it. By the way, this is like old bodybuilding uh, knowledge. But uh, now more of the mainstream fitness is starting to come out and talk, especially after that one study that came out that showed that whole eggs versus egg whites, even if the protein was controlled, mm -hmm. contributed to more muscle. Yeah. And it's the cholesterol. It actually signals muscle growth uh, through a few Dude. different mechanisms. How many body. things are completely the opposite of what we learned growing up? Oh, you mean from, from uh, food. government telling yeah. us what's healthy, what's, what's healthy, healthy, and what's not? I, 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 I feel like it's everything. It's now, does that, does that make you question, though, what we believe today more? Well, I, not what I believe, because what I believe often is counter to that other stuff. But I well, mean, we didn't when we were in it, right? I mean, we all admitted that we were we were in the thick of it and, yep. and bought into all that. That yep. fat made you fat, right? Mm -hmm. we, were, yeah. we were pushing the the low fat diets back in the you know I, yeah early early two thousands late nineties. So candy solves diabetes. That's my next. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's your next prediction. No, but really though, because we've seen just in in our short time of of being in this in this uh, space. We've seen the evolution of, of nutrition yeah. science change so much. Does that ever make you guys question our beliefs today on what we think is is so important or great or what's working or not with amongst all these these yeah, popular? I'm diets? much more critical in terms of yeah when something comes out like that like some new way of uh, you know it's, say it's like carnivore diet or say it's something else like it's so radical. Uh, I'm definitely slow to to jump. I, I I I'm at the point now, and I'm sure you, I know you guys are too, because we talk about this kind of stuff. We've been just doing this for so long that the you start to learn to be critical, yeah. right? Because there were so many things I took for granted, so many things I thought were uh, you know uh, true or right common knowledge that were proven to be totally uh, false. Right. So I mean. I mean, I'll tell you what. If you're not, if you're under thirty, you you don't remember this. Uh, but um, you know, we used to be. I mean, pushed hard to buy margarine mm -hmm. like this. And in fact, they would call margarine something healthy, like yeah, yeah. healthy spread or heart spread or whatever. Yeah, because it was uh, it was you vegetable oil. It was better. No, yeah, no saturated fat. So it was like it was like plastic butter. They like made out of plastic or whatever. Right. And they would literally label it that, and it was totally fine. And I remember like well, they're family doing the members. same with meat right now. I feel. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, like, that's, so, so, so meat that's made in a lab is better, apparently. Yeah. Public enemy number one now is meat. Right? Yeah. Meat is it's, apparently. It's interesting to watch. Even though it's the one food that you could technically, not that I would recommend this. I don't think this is a good choice, but it's the only single food you could ever just eat by itself. 
and probably never get a nutrient deficiency. Yeah. You can't do that with any Although other- Although that would suck. Like I, I see, like we have friends that are like all on the carnivore diet. We have a handful. Yeah, of- I don't think it's ideal. Right. I just, and we, we, we were just back, we just got back from Truckee and- you know, one of the things we all we always eat when we're all together, the the four of us guys, we always do the the ribeyes, right? We do the big ribeyes, big yeah, ribeyes, mushrooms, onions, and asparagus. It's like the staple meal that we eat. And we had it back to back days, and I'm 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 already like I'm cool on the steak. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to take it. <laughs> oh really? I was yeah. like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. Yeah, I was. Good. Oh no, it was amazing both nights. But then I got home, you know, last night, and I'm like, I you know, I didn't feel like steak, you know, oh, on yeah. something else. So. I can't imagine doing that. Is that for, why you had tacos and cake? Yeah, yeah tacos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Did you celebrate Sal's birthday yeah. without me? I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I know this guy eating his cake. Both you two flying under the radar on the birthdays, dude. I know. You guys ashamed of your age? I, no, I just stopped I counting. After yeah, a certain point. at this point, you know, you pass forty, it's like whatever. I actually literally start to forget. Like, so, wait a minute, how old am I? Now, what, now, what are your your fam? Both your your immediate family, so wives and kids, and then also like your immediate family, like your mom's dad's aunts, uncles. How are they with your his birthday is it like a big celebration still because you're old and no one gives a fuck or what's it like i i just get a lot of messages my mom's the only one that cares really? she still cares yeah, she does hard she used to you know what was embarrassing she used to make these huge flags and put it outside her house with what? like my face on it and like all this <laughs> stuff it was funny. are you serious oh yeah dude. please was, tell me you have a picture of that so somewhere embarrassing i'll find it dude i'll show you please guys. tell Hold me you have a picture of that this is the same this is the same person who made you dress up like a leprechaun yes on- <laughs> Yes, dude. St. Patrick's You guys Day. have no idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she put me on Front Street all oh, the time. Right. Your mom was training you. To yeah. like, you know what I mean? Just like yeah, just deal with it, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to embarrass That's why them. I'm not embarrassed. I, I don't really get embarrassed very often. I, I, I used all that up. Okay, so tell me. In my childhood. Did you did you go through a phase of your life then of like resentment and animosity towards her? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you wouldn't be normal. I mean, you wouldn't be normal if you did. Oh, yeah. Well, it was mainly over like things that uh, I would tell her and, and uh, that was going on in school. Like I was having problems with my teacher or whatever. And then she would come in like guns blazing and like embarrass me. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! So I stopped telling her things. Like that. <laughs> I can in. just picture you, your mom coming in to save you from getting in fights at school, and then she's <laughs> got flags of your face on your yeah, birthday. Dude. Like, oh, oh man, anybody drove by, they're just, it's just like, yeah, oh, turned sixteen. This it was it, like it went all the way till I left. This explains the house. why you're tough as nails. You probably got your ass kicked all through fucking middle I school. <laughs> I did get my ass kicked quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's like, I'm just trying to prevent you from getting bullied, and you're like, Mom, it's yeah. the flags in front of the house on my face. It's yeah. getting me. She's back. like, it's just <laughs> reps, honey. You know, <laughs> now what was on the what was on the fly was like a picture of you as a baby in the bathtub, or yeah. was it like a current picture? Yeah, it was like a it was like a picture of my like I was a baby. Like it had like you know this younger face, and then it had like happy birthday. And it had like some sports, you know, like ball on there, or whatever. Like like San Francisco 49ers, you know, whatever. It was just like whatever I was into. She'd like put throw it on the flag and then iron it on there. That's hilarious. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that's so good. I'm telling you guys, I love your mom. I, yeah, she's, I've never met. She's her. crazy. Have I met your mom? I'm only met your dad i don't know if you've met yeah no your yeah, dad's you cool. probably haven't your dad's a great guy i never met your mom though yeah I yeah bet. you like she's i mean she's out there like she's funny like she's like uh, i hate to admit it but i get a lot of my personality from her for sure oh you know like oh. she's definitely like that but also can be a, a lot that's hilarious yeah did you, when you guys were kids did you did you guys your moms have albums of you when you were a baby in oh, the yeah. bathtub naked was that that was like a uh, thing back then and they put you with uh, you know, like their friends, friends. Yeah, like, he's all naked in there. Yeah. 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 So I'm there. This, that was awkward because at one point uh, I was single and I came back from Chicago and, you know, they're all trying to play matchmaker and all this stuff because I didn't have a girlfriend. And uh, one of the girls that, uh, you know, I grew up with, good friends of the family, all this stuff. Like we got pictures of just us in the bathtub naked together and all this stuff. And they're like bringing it out. And like, I'm sitting there and she's like right next to me. It was so awkward, dude. You could totally capitalize on that. I could have. Yeah, probably. I mean, been like, hey, you want to- I've already seen you naked. I've already seen you naked. It's grown substantially. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should check it out. That's the angle you would go. Hey, like yeah, yeah. Let's try it again. It's Good different. Let's Good see call. how different we look now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's put them next to each let's other. Let's compare and contrast. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> then you wouldn't get in trouble. What are you doing, Mom? I'm just you what know. we're we're yeah. We want to see how it all like worked out. You guys encourage this. Oh God, That's my hilarious. parents did the uh, on my 16th birthday. So I think I've showed you guys. You remember that? Have I showed you that picture of me like standing on a table and I'm in red underwear and I'm flexing and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's I a must great one. be seven years old or so somewhere around mm-hmm. there. Uh, and my 16th birthday, I had we had taken a, a a limo. I had a girlfriend who her parents actually owned a limo. 
and they took for my 16th. You did a lot of wow. weird shit for being poor. I know. Well, I had a lot of rich friends. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's I, the move. I would. Yeah, no, totally. Right. So I had. A, I had the. I had <laughs> that's the, the move. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. you befriend that's, all the rich kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was no dummy. You know, yeah. so I figured that out real early. Right. So. I, I, I had a girlfriend who was, her dad was a lawyer, and so he had a, he owned a, a limo. It was an old one. It wasn't that cool. But it was cool for me, right? It was cool for my 16th birthday. We'd go out to like Chevy's or something, right? And then we'd come back. And I come, so I have like 12, I don't know, 12, 15 of my friends and my girlfriend. And we come walking in the door to my house after we went to Chevy's. And there is a, you know, poster size, you know, 50 by 80, you know, massive thing of me in my underwear. <laughs> You know, they blew. My mom still has this. She still got it. Wow. Yeah, in storage. Like, and she every once in a while she pulls it out and thinks it's so funny. Now you were sixteen, so was it embarrassing? Because I know now, as an adult, you would think it's hilarious yeah, and great. Like, but when you're sixteen, you know, sometimes you get embarrassed. Um, you know what? I I've always been I've always been into self depreciating humor, and um, because I had crooked teeth, I was poor, I was you skinny. No, you had no choice. Yeah, and so I so I I leaned into the whole like making fun of me, and so I I had thick skin. So it was funny. It wasn't like uh, it didn't fucking cripple me or me or traumatize me like forever. It was it was funny, right? It was whatever. But uh, I, I was that kid. I was already that kid who did things that was not normal. Was okay with people teasing me. Like I learned, I learned that early on. Did to you be okay with that? Yeah. At one point, I figured that out, but it took me a little while. I remember there was this video. I went to Hawaii with my cousin's family and some other friend, uh, you know, friends of the family. Uh -huh. And so I must have been. 13, probably 13 years old, and my cousin and I are, are on the beach and we're trying to figure out how to use a boogie board. Had no idea what we're doing. Actually, in fact, what we did is we put the board on the sand and wait for the wave to get us. That's what we thought. Oh, wow. We thought the wave would pull us in. I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> but anyway, I'm out That's there. A skin board. And I'm in my 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 you know bathing suit and I'm just skinny, right? I'm, I was ectom I'm an ectomorph, right? So I'm just a skinny kid. And it took me, you know, I'll, I'll get so mad when they play family that family video of that. Because like, oh, don't show that. It was too skinny. Uh, <laughs> I was like, until I was like 16 years old that I finally thought, like, whatever, not a big deal. But I remember I'll get so mad for like a, at least a couple years. Uh, oh, don't show that video. Oh, no, I, I remember that, too. I had the same thing because my mom would film everything. And I, I was goofing and, and we used to do a lot of lip syncing and stuff because my, my cousin lived with me for a while. She was like my older sister and uh, she'd get me, she'd, you know, dress me up and do all kinds of shit to me. And like, we'd like sing songs and stuff. And one time my mom like took a video of us doing all that. And then like, I didn't know. And then she, like, we had a bunch of people over watching that and I walk in and it was me, you know, goofing and like, you know, acting a what, fool. What were you wearing? I, I was wearing a wig and you know what I'm saying? Like I was like singing some like ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, pop song and oh my god I, I like I was so mad I was like your mom no and I like stormed off I wonder if kids today are less embarrassed because everything is filmed all the time or if it's worse you know what I'm saying because yeah. when you're a kid you see a video of yourself That's probably when, true. when we were kids if I saw a video of myself it was not a normal thing like I think, it's, I think it's worse now because 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 teasing and bullying has always been around, right? Even when we were kids, right? So it's no different. It's just how the kids get teased and bullied now. So like, if you have a video that gets seen by somebody that's your peer today, I imagine that the like, kids share and post that shit. Like, oh, that's that, I can see that's that really common. Around. Like in yeah. high school, with my, my buddy who's the, even the principal, he has to police that. That's like one of the most common things is. The way kids bully is they get a pic, you know, a picture of a kid that they tease and make fun of. The draw on it, yeah, exactly. The way they're stuff. eating and then they do they do That's shit so to it and then up. they post it or they or they text it to everybody. It's in the classroom and now everybody's looking at this photo. So, yeah, it's like a different type of bullying, right? It's not like we dealt with bullying where somebody some bully gets in your face and like yeah, but he's not, thro throws you in the trash can or something. You know, what I'm saying physically does something to yeah. you. Where it's I think it's more like a mental warfare for kids yeah. today. Because well, then only like away. two people watch, right? So right. like it, it wasn't like the whole school got to see it. You know, now it's like you do something, you post it out there, everybody got it. Well, that's true. I didn't even think of that because you know if I got bullied, it was when the bully was there. When the bully yeah. wasn't there, right. there was it was no, one to one. There was no, there was yeah. no bullying, and, you know and I mean? many times he does it. He does that privately, right? He can't do that where the teachers are at and lots of kids are at. So you know, yeah. it's, he catches you somewhere by yourself, and then you get punked. Yeah, right? you're safe when you get home, or if they're not around. But if it's online, you're not safe yeah. anywhere. You're yeah. looking at your phone and probably checking. You know, like oh my gosh, I can't believe this is that. wow. That would be terrible. Yeah. Think, yeah, as no, a kid, yeah, no, it's. Uh, I mean, I, it'll be interesting, right? I have a kid who's growing, growing now, so we'll see. And I know you guys are really starting. to get into that world i know both your kids have mm -hmm. they have phones right uh, just my son oh your son does mm -hmm. your daughter doesn't mm -hmm. 
So, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I, when's the last time you asked him stuff like that? You know, like, what's that like? Well, I told you that they, that he, by, by just association, he got in trouble because he was in this big uh, group thread. And one of the kids on there, I don't remember exactly what happened, but one of the other kids was, you know, basically bullying him through the text with like a, a few things that he said to him. Bullying and your son or no, somebody no, else? some other kid. Right, right. But, because but my your son, son was, was in the in thread. The thread and it. because my son and other kids didn't jump in to stop it. So mm -hmm. this is why he got in trouble. He got, he got in trouble, which, uh, you know, part of me is like, really? He's going to get in trouble for not... But then the other part of me is like, you know what? That's not a bad lesson. Like, if you see something and you're there, you, you should say, hey, this isn't cool. But anyway... Yeah. He got, you know, reprimanded because he didn't jump in with a lot of the other kids. And so there was some bullying that happened. But this was a group text that wasn't online. Mm. Online, I'm sure it would have been a lot worse. That's interesting that you, it's a grouped thread, which they, the, the kid who's in the thread is obviously has made the choice to be in the thread. He gets, that's, how is that any different than the bullying that I do with you on a regular basis in our thread, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's four of us in a thread. I talk shit to you got we talk shit to each other all the time in there because mm -hmm. we're friends we have each other's cell phone numbers how is that like well this was the conversation i had with my son as i said to him i said number one if if you're if you're seeing somebody that needs help or whatever it's, it's a good idea to say something or leave uh, at the very least but i said also number two choose the people that you have this kind of relationship with wisely because not everybody's like we like just us rip each other. If people saw the stuff that we said and did with each other, yeah. they'd be mortified. Yeah. But we, this is the kind of, you know, we, we think it's hilarious. In fact, when you guys rip on me, it's it's like, I, I can't stop laughing. It's the funniest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if some people aren't, aren't like that, some people get really, their feelings get really hurt or they take uh, it the wrong way. Have you watched, uh, and I was going to bring this up because I watched the Breakfast Club, the movie, mm -hmm. you know, the, the old classic, school classic, yeah. right? And you think it's good, right? Like, we, yeah, I was like, that's a great movie. And I watched it again and I was like, oh my God, it's a terrible movie. Mm. It was just a bunch of whiny little wimps. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they're just you're crying about everything. And this guy was being such a douche the whole entire movie. You're just like, oh my God, I don't... Why was this good? It's because you're a, you're a dad now, dude. Yeah, I wanted to slap all of them. I, oh I, no, yeah, it's a classic. Bro. Oh my god, watch uh, it, it again. It, 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 oh, I, I've watched it. That I watch that one probably every year. I watch it. I like that one. It's I a do classic. too. It's a. I mean, it's uh, it represents. Your, it's like coming of age. I, yeah, exactly, I get all that, it represents what you probably were like in high school. Here's what happens, and this is a yeah. weird transition that happened to me not that long ago. I used to I used to identify with the kids in the movie. Now I start to identify with the principal. Yeah, exactly. now I'm like, These you know, that, kids that's need what to is. stop. It, there was a massive shift, you know, <laughs> yes. in my mentality. I was like, I was like, what? Like, yes. I can't even put up with this. Yeah. You know, like all totally. oh, this whining. Ugh. Yeah, totally. <laughs> These kids need to stop. That's just, what it just is. Get your it's shit it's not the movie. You've changed. Oh, bro, a hundred percent. I'll watch a movie where there'll be some like kids that like. They want to go out and they want to party and drink. And, you know, when I was younger, I was like, yeah, this could be cool. Now, as a dad, I'm like, these, I hope the parents like, this is terrible. <laughs> I couldn't imagine if I was that parent. I'd be so angry right now. I know. You right? just associate with someone, don't, with the other person. Oh, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, so obviously, you guys said today's my birthday. And I was thinking back to uh, when I first started working out and I did the math. I have been working out consistently for 28 years. 28. Almost three decades. What do you think is the longest break in 28 years you've taken? From working out? Yeah, and how many times? Like, how many times have you taken that long of a Only break? injuries. I was going to say, so you've had an injury, like your shoulder, right? At yeah, point. yeah, shoulder. So, and how much did that put you down? Um, I mean, it was like a couple weeks, and then I started doing rehab, and I would train the rest of my body. Um, when I was doing jiu-jitsu, I didn't lift a lot, but I was still lifting two days a week at least because I was doing a lot of jujitsu. Okay. I don't think I've ever taken like a break except for when I was, uh, you know, injured or sick or something like that. Or, wow. Or, yeah. So it's it's been pretty consistent. But thinking back to the stuff that I learned or the value that I got from it, um, it's really yes, I definitely can change my body. I mean, I'm a, I'm like, I am a classic hard gainer ectomorph, so I definitely changed that. I think I've definitely. Uh, I had some muscle hyperplasia and things that, you know, like if I never lifted weights, I, I would still be that hard gainer that I was as a kid. I think it's my natural tendency. But the real value I got is all the other stuff. has nothing to do with the physical uh, stuff. It's all about the like, you know what it reminds me of? Karate Kid when he's waxing the car and painting the fence. Mm. Like the, it's the lessons he's learning from doing that right. are, are go to other places. In that case, it was karate. He doesn't see it initially. He doesn't. Yeah. So for me, it was like, you know, I learned the lesson of like, you're going to suck at stuff before you get good. And you're probably going to suck at stuff for a long time. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Just keep keep trying. And that you're, you don't get any 
there's no real fundamental change or significant change in anything you do unless you're really uncomfortable. Like I learned that I learned how to have a different relationship with uh, physical uncomfortable, being physically uncomfortable. I think it's crazy that you you've gone 28 years and never a whole month. What about you, Doug? I know you, Justin, you too. What do you, what do you, what's the like longest breaks that you guys have had? I, I've had periods where I've had fairly long breaks. Right. Uh, like when I lived in Japan, I did work out for a while there and then I kind of got out of it yeah. for maybe a couple of years. Yeah. So maybe that's about as long. Yeah. Justin. Yeah. You. I think, well, at least three or four months after yeah. football, I was like, just, I don't know what it was, but there was just a moment where I was just completely fried because I was so. Um, high performance driven, mm. like I wanted to smash weights every time. And I just, I felt like that was the only way to to work out. And so I was just like, I'm going to just step away for a while. And then uh, I was eating and drinking and I got fat as fuck. You yeah. know? It, it just happened. And then I, and I just didn't like it. I didn't like the feeling of not being in the gym, not uh, being strong and, and, and energetic, and it just it just got to me, and so I just I just slowly made my way back. Mm. Yeah, I think the the longest I've ever gone is probably three to six months, but I've done that a few times. I, I can recall several injuries sometimes uh, coming off of not that long ago with the testosterone thing and the Achilles injury. Like I've I've done probably a few times in my life since I started uh you know training where I've taken like 3 months to 6 months. You know what always brings me back though to your point Sal. It's not oh my god look at my body like I don't Totally. It's always like I start to feel like lethargic and lazy. It's the and, mental and, and, and emotional and, and effects. The mood like mm -hmm. my, I start to notice like when like the, always for me when I would take a break the first couple of weeks are actually almost refreshing. Like, oh, I got all this free time. I don't have to go to the gym now, this and that. And the next thing I notice is sleeping in longer, mm -hmm. you know, tired throughout the day. Like, just not, you know, I need to go do something in the afternoon and I've already sat down and I don't want to get back up. Like, you're way less motivated. Yes. I start general. to, I start to notice that and I start to see it bleeding into other aspects of my life. That's what always gets me. That's what always goes, you know what? I need to get out of this funk and get back in the gym, even if it's just something real basic, whether it be mobility or rowing or doing something, because that's what starts to eat away at me more than anything else. Yeah. It's, if, you know, for me, it's just a, it's a, it's a daily, uh, I don't know. Meditation is the best word I could use. I know it's not meditation. But for me, it's uh, in the same sense, it, it uh, replenishes me. It, it, you know, it, it focuses me, centers me. And so I find that kind of value uh, when, I, when I do that. So, uh, but, you know, in, in the most simplest terms, the way I explain it to clients is, you know, you, all the, the outside world you receive through this physical body. So everything that you see and feel and hear and perceive it has to come through your eyes and your ears and your body, your skin. And so if your body is not healthy, then the inf you're going to perceive the world worse. Mm -hmm. And studies show this. People who are fit tend to handle challenges better. They tend to view things more positively. It's a filter. So if your filter is dirty... And you're gonna the air can be clean on the other side, but when it goes into that filter, it's gonna smell dirty. So it's like I want to make myself my at least my physical body, which I yeah. can control a lot of. I want to make it so that I perceive things in the best possible way, and that, and that's what you know fitness does. I have I was having an interesting conversation with Courtney about uh, well, she just got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, and um, we were talking about gut issues, and I just I can't help but think that the majority of people have gut issues based on what they've been eating over the years. And like, maybe it hasn't really hit them uh, in certain ways that it's like super noticeable, but um, you know, cause I know so many healthy people that have been able to identify these things now. And I just feel like that, you know, there, there becomes some uh, sort of a new normal, the way that you operate and you just sort of deal with whatever uh, pain or whatever discomfort or whatever skin issues or all these things. Like you're just, you think that's just a part of you and how you should be, you know, every day. And it's not the case. Totally. Think about this. Think about if, you know, people in your family who, you know, as a fitness professional or whatever is unhealthy, m bad mobility, unhealthy. Right? I have family members like that. Imagine if for a day you could switch bodies. The contrast you would feel would be like, oh my God, how do you do this? Yeah. I think it's a slow boil. I think of that course. they slowly get to that point and they're like, oh no, I, I, this is just- You don't know what healthy feels like anymore. Exactly. Yeah. And I, oh yeah, no, yeah, I'm totally fine. I feel totally- This is why when you would get clients, how often would you do this? You'd get a client and especially when you became good as a trainer, right? After five years of training or whatever, and you would do exercises to make them feel less pain and they'd be, their minds would explode. And after a couple months, 
uh, I, I didn't realize my back was so stiff and now I can move or, oh my God, I reached up to grab something and then I could totally reach up higher on the, on the cat yeah. stuff that they just blew their mind because they, they were so used to how they felt. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, we, uh, we talked about this, I think, God, it's, it's been probably, I want to say two years or so, maybe a little bit longer when, uh, we, we started to, when did we get HubSpot, Doug? Two years ago? So yeah, at least two, two years ago. So when we got HubSpot, we were all excited about that company. I think the stock was trading at about a, a, a hundred and thirty a share around that time. When so we got 18, it, one eighteen. When we got it was lower than that. When one, I one eighteen. Yeah, or, when I bought it was like one hundred thirty. Yeah, yeah, it was right around there. So it was between one and when we were talking about it on the podcast. Did you see the news? They just uh, well, they just acquired um, the Hustle. One of our oh, favorite newsletters that we've... Did we they talk- say how much they paid for it? They didn't say how much they paid for it. They did say... I did read, though, how many subscribers that The Hustle has. They have, like, over 1.5 million subscribers that open. And their open rate is ridiculous. You remember when we had him on the show, right? The CEO? Oh, yeah. And he talked about their open rate was, like, well over 40%. They so. must have a massive email list. That's probably why HubSpot... Over 1.5 million. That's uh, what I just said. Yeah. yeah, so they have over 1.5 million people that are on that list, and over ha- about half of them are opening that every single day. So they Wow. Have, yeah, so it's... Well, as of right now, HubSpot is uh, over $400 a Ooh, share. Oh, boy. Yeah, and I, now here's my personal opinion. Um, now, full disclosure, I own some HubSpot uh, shares, but uh, I believe because HubSpot handles online marketing and you know siloing your email list and all that stuff and, and because so many businesses are, are online now and will continue to grow yeah it's HubSpot, basically the new standard yeah hubspot's gonna it's gonna be like an amazon or a google like it's because it's, the, it's one of the best ones yeah, yeah. so I, I think it's still even at 400 dollars a share i would say it's a good long play speaking of shares you guys see gw pharmaceutical what yeah. happened there? what bought for seven billion yeah so i think it was jazz uh pharmaceuticals i think that was the name of it, bought gw so gw pharmaceutical for the people that know is a is a, a pharmaceutical company that makes cannabinoid based medicine so medicine based off of uh marijuana they have uh uh the, the first the only some of the only approved drugs uh, based off of cannabinoids, and they have a huge pipeline of drugs coming through phase one trials, phase two trials, mm-hmm. um, and uh, they got bought, and the share exploded. I think it went up forty something percent, trading at over two hundred dollars. Wow! Now, wow. so that was a good. I bought that one. I bought that one uh, on a was a pink sheet, meaning it wasn't. Oh, even you bought traded. it on a pink sheet, huh? I had, yeah, I had to. It was trading at nine dollars a share when wow. it first. And I was. This is when I was deep in the in the marijuana science. When yeah, I was, yeah. you know, my family member was had cancer, and I was studying yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm gonna buy this. So I just bought a bunch of pink sheets, and I normally stay away from that, right? Because it's such high risk oh, to, yeah. to do something like that. Um, but my my buddy Brendan's been telling me to watch this company Carbon Ion. That just got bought out by uh, the ticker C O U V, and I forget the the name of the holding company that bought them, and they're trying to take them to the New York Stock Exchange. They got they have like over I think thirty or sixty patents on this battery. Now, how are you buying them on the pink? Because because I know the online trading they don't let you buy pink sheets or, or do yeah you, you can okay but you, you just have, have to, to do like you there's something I have to change in the on my E Trade account. Okay, uh, do you know what, what what's it called? Yeah, there? I think you have to set a limit. Yeah. So there's some things that I have to do different. Probably signs like check something that's like a disclaimer or something like that. Was, yeah, know. yeah, you because they they tell you get like a little warning that this is yeah. not on the New York Stock Exchange or yeah. whatever. So yeah, but I mean it's so ch- I think that it's a, it's right around like forty something cents right now. So it's not a major investment, a major risk for me. But I really like what they're doing. You're talking about batteries like for car batteries that will last. I think it's, it was up to like 40, 40 something years, something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It charge like a car battery will charge within the same time that you would pump gas the car battery will recharge that well, fast that sounds groundbreaking oh yeah. it is groundbreaking like i sent you an email to read all but uh, read everything that i sent over to you that i'm really interested in it and, and watching that right now so it's pretty exciting wow that's really cool yeah. i'm gonna mm-hmm. look i know you talked to me about it i'm gonna look a little bit uh closer into that mm-hmm. hey you guys want to hear something cr- like a cr- i just learned this the other day uh i thought it was fascinating let's see if you guys what you guys think about this mm-hmm. so there's these two there's this canadian twins um, and they're, I can't remember the term that they used, uh, for the, oh, they're, let's see, I wrote it up there. Craniopagus twins. Do you know what that means? No. Craniopagus? Their heads, heads are attached? Their heads they are attached. Oh. And their brains. They have wings? Is that what you <laughs> like said? Pegasus? Yeah, right, no. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're twins that fly. Yeah, that'd be awesome. No, they're, they're attached at the head. Yeah. And their brains actually have a connection. That's oh, wild. Wow. So they can 
fe- they can literally feel what the other person's feeling. That's wild. And they can That's know they know trippy. what the other person's thinking, and they can oftentimes taste, smell, or see what the other person's. Dude, thinking. how weird would that be? How, how weird would that be to like be thinking something in a room, and then the the twin said the yeah. other one, the other twin said something like, "No, no, no, I don't like that." Dude, you know? yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like, "You messed up, man." Yeah, dude, that would be wild, right? Well, you're, to have a voice come out and say what you were thinking, right? Well, right. you're you're like you're one. I mean, it's like you're two people, but you share one uh, consciousness almost. I thought that was so fascinating. I've never is, heard of that never before. Never heard of that. That is fascinating. So you can't do anything about it, right? They try and separate it. They, they might yeah. kill them or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. You wasn't there there wasn't there a case, I don't know, a few years back, I thought I remember, maybe we even we even talked about it, where a doctor was like the first doctor to actually separate those. Oh, I don't think it was this kind of- uh, I think it was. They were attached to no, They were attached to the head. Look really? At, yeah, look it up. Doug. I, I don't know what you would what you would Google to find that, but I, I'm pretty sure- Yeah, but sure. they probably didn't share thoughts. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it did. I didn't read anything like that. It, I don't think they were that. Maybe they weren't that connected. There was one pair of uh, of conjoined twins where th- they were they were on TV for a while, and then th- they would date. I thought that was very interesting because uh, yeah. uh-huh. like one of them had a boyfriend. So like, what is the other one? I guess the other one's just there just, when they just, they just kind of just crossword puzzles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, like, what are you? What are you, are doing you guys done anymore? yet? Yeah. Yeah. What is this rare set of conjoined twins successfully separated in twenty four hour surgery? At UC Davis. Wow, that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. You know, conjoined twins, very, you're right, they were attached at the head. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. It, very sad story with conjoined twins. The history, they, they, mo- they almost always were, the only way they could make uh, a living for themselves was to be in a circus mm-hmm. and have people pay to look at them. I know, that's uh, so messed up. Very sad. Yeah. yeah. Very, interesting, too. Yeah. Very fascinating. Anyway, it's pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys see Beyond Meat uh, talking about stocks, right? Just shot up like 31% because they did a joint venture with Pepsi. Oh, wow. Oh, what? That's Wait. like, the, so the new thing right now, it's not new. Like it's been, it's been happening. I feel like. It's like cocaine partnering with heroin. No, uh, I mean, we saw, remember the Super Bowl last year? Magic. I think it was Doritos and Sprite partnered up. Yeah. Like, so you're starting to see a lot hmm. of these companies that you would think are kind of competitors. You know, they're, they're like, if they're in food and beverage, you would consider that the, you know, a competitor. But I mean, they're they're enough different that they are starting to see these these companies partner up, and so I find it interesting that Pepsi is doing something with Beyond Meat, and I think that's going to be you'll see commercials probably this this year coming out. With wow, them. well, that's I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense to partner up to you know fast foods or, sm- or snack foods or whatever. Yeah. yeah, but you know, Beyond Meat for me is just ugh. so. How can we make meat unhealthy? Yeah. Oh, let's let's make it. Let's invent it out of all these parts and pieces. Do you pieces even from- grill it, or is it like uh, some microwave? Well, meat? no, you you grill it, and and it's technologically it's fascinating. They engineered the shit out of plant products to make it like bleed and taste like meat. So it still drips and everything. Yes, like a, yeah. It, it, so it tastes good. The macros are the same as meat, so it's not like it's lower calorie. It's less healthy. It's literally heavily. You eat a burger. Yeah. It's the it's ingredient. All vegetable oil. Well, the ingredients of burger is meat. It's like it's just beef, right? Yeah, yeah. The ingredient get yourself a Beyond Burger, flip it, look at the ingredients. There's like <laughs> five hundred things. <laughs> yes, yeah. Half it's like advanced you science. Half of them you well, can't yeah, pronounce. to match nature. Yeah, they they need a ton of ingredients. So you got to ask yourself, why would a company do that? Uh, is the market for not eating meat that big? Maybe or. How can we sell a burger patty and patent it so nobody else can sell a burger patty? Yeah, that's... Or both. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You can't patent a beef patty, mm-hmm. but you can patent a Beyond Burger. Yeah. Nobody else has that. Right, right, that right. That crazy technology. I saw another interesting... Doug, would you Google this for me so I, so I make sure I get my facts right? Domino's merges with... St- or partners with streaming service. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I read this somewhere. Oh, I thought that would the, be smart. Where you watch Netflix and would you like a pizza? It, so yeah, I, I I think I can't remember where this I came across this, uh, but Domino's has made a lot of technological moves. They have, and yeah. they, they they've rebranded it a couple times. Like it would be, you know, that would be a fun CEO to talk to. Although yeah. it'd be so weird. I for feel Brian like they've had a, like automated their uh, epic self driving vehicles. Oh, yeah, they're working that. on to deliver pizza. I thought that was smart. Yeah. Let's see. It's giving out. Okay, Domino's is giving out free thirty day movie streaming subscriptions if you order a pizza online. Well, that's smart. Isn't that? Yeah, you, you know, I've never had a Domino's pizza. So ever. Epix uh, used to be um, forgettable. <laughs> Epix <laughs> is the old Cinemax. Am, is, am I getting that right? Epix. So I I have that streaming service. They do. Um, remember, Justin, I introduced you to the 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 Batman, the the prequel with uh, the oh, Butler yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, Epix. Uh, yeah, Penny, yeah. Pennywise. Penny. Yeah. So that is, I believe they used to be a a different company. I don't remember. Epix. Huh. 
Cinemax. That was the. That, I think it was. Cinemax. That was the channel to watch after 10 p.m. Remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Skinemax. Yeah. yeah. Who is it? Doug? Who uh, is it's it? American Premium Cable and Satellite Television Network that is owned by Epix Entertainment, a subsidiary of Metro Golden Mayor MGM. Uh, oh, MGM. Yeah. So Pennyworth. Yeah. Oh, Pennyworth. What did yeah. I say? Pennyworth. What Pennywise, company yeah. owns yeah. Epix? Click on that and see. Oh, Stars. That's what it was. Oh, so Stars is now becoming Epix. Got it. Got it. That's how many? What it was. So, Adam, how many of these individual channels do you pay for? Do you <laughs> uh, know? Uh, we could is it like your gym memberships that you still have? Bro, yeah, it's, I'm really bad with this stuff. Like, I, I, so you, I have Epix, I have the ESPN one, I have Sling, I have Hulu, I have Netflix, I have HBO, uh, you got HBO BB. Max, do you H- have regular HBO. Um, Disney. Show, Showtime, Disney. Thank you, Doug. Um, God damn, I should probably add all these up. Yeah, probably paying way more than what I used to be paying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dude, God. they got us. Finally. I don't know, bro. Like, I mean, even if you were to add all those up, because some of those, like uh, ESPN, was an extra four ninety nine. Disney's like nine. Dude, it used to be like two hundred something. Yes, right? no, my cable bill was two hundred and like fifty like or forty. Two, yeah, yeah, a month. And then when football season came around, and I would get the Sunday ticket, it would shoot uh, that up to like. Four or five hundred for the next three four months. Wow, that's crazy. yeah. No, so I had no. So idea. I paid a lot of money for cable before. So even though I have all of those streaming services and I could probably get rid of some of them that I don't use very often, I still think it's. Do under- you have uh, what's it called? YouTube Red. I don't I have YouTube TV. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know you. I know you guys. Well, it's, I don't. It, well, it's like if you have Hulu, there's no real point. You need one, uh, you know, streaming service like that though, so you can actually get like real channels still. You yeah, know, that's been, my Sling. So Sling yeah. does that also. So right? I have Hulu, and you know, there's a great show on Hulu called Big Sky. Have you heard of this? Mm-mm. It's ABC. It's an ABC film, and it's uh, really good. You guys should check it out. It's like a cop. I don't know. Your like recommendations thriller. are suspect. No, this is this yeah. is good. I'll let Doug or I'll Justin check, check you out. Yeah, listen, for, yeah. listen. <laughs> Justin and I <laughs> tend to be on the same page. <laughs> yeah. with some of this I got him on the Bob Lazar. Uh, we were listening on the drive home. Uh, oh yeah, interview with uh, Joe Rogan. Oh, that was crazy. It's so crazy. I'm gonna man. watch that documentary. now. So detailed. Dude. I don't know. Like it's probably the most compelling UFO thing. Yeah. I've yeah. Ever. yeah. Are, are you guys watching our YouTube channel right now, man? People are more and more people are watching the podcast. Podcast now on the YouTube channel. Yeah. It's going crazy. Yeah, I see Callen's cool. episodes blowing up already right now. So he's a fun guest, man. I think we're going to start doing more things over there. I mean, I, I don't know if we've announced it on the podcast or not, but you know, we're what every Monday a vlog gets released right now on the Mind Pump TV channel. So if you're not subscribed to the Mind Pump TV and Mind Pump podcast channel on YouTube, do that. We're starting to really produce more content for that. See what you guys like. Our first question is from David GTZ09. What's in Sal's bag? Oh, I'm so glad. You guys oh, did. I'm you so glad this? we're addressing this now. Oh, uh, Doug, why'd you do that? Put me at, on the spot. After, you know what? After we talked about it on the show, I must have got a bajillion freaking yeah. DMs. I am getting sick of it. I know. I'm like, I don't even, I didn't even care that bad, but now I, we have to get this done with. So yeah. come on, pull you your- guys cornered I just pull your, you don't have any meth in Pull there. your purse out and let me see what so, you got okay, in there. Okay, so here's the deal. If you don't know this, there was a previous episode where Adam, because I have a bag that's got supplements in it and it's I tend a, to take it with me. It's a cute little loop. Lululemon bag that it's he carries just because I don't just because it was a bag that <laughs> I grabbed and that's what I used. It was Jessica's bag. We did one thing there, and he uh, yeah. you know came out. But with I, I uh, um, you know, I carry it into the studio, and I have supplements in there. And uh, you have a lot of supplements in there. I do. I don't use them all. All well, it depends. I'll go. You want me to go through? Them? I, not only do I want you to all go right. through them, but I want you to as you go through them because you have some weird shit in there. I believe. Mm. Please tell the audience and us. What it is and why you take it. All right. Yeah, there's there's got to be a reason for All each right. thing. All yeah, right. yeah. I'll hold it up. So there's the red bag you guys are making fun of. Yeah. All right, I'll start with the first thing. Let's see. Okay, here's the first thing. This is a baby on board. <laughs> what? Sign. Okay, so this story. Are you it. a guy that actually sticks that in his what? window every time? I'm supposed to stick this on my window. Jessica put it in here to stick on the window. <laughs> and I didn't. And then a week later, there's a sticker on the window that says baby on board. So uh, Jessica won Sal Zero. Uh, oh my goodness. Wow. Still in there. All right. Um, I'll go through. I'll just grab the first thing. So this is uh, psyllium husk. Which is a fiber supplement, and now everybody knows I, I struggle with gut issues here and there, so I tend to take psyllium husk after two or three meals to help. Now, uh, do you take that gut. every day, or do you only? Every day. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. I do, and and I haven't. I, I, it's if it I doesn't don't, matter whatever you're eating too. It's just like if it it's just a has me- to happen. If it's a big meal, if it's a snack, no big uh, deal. But if it's a big meal, and what happens if I don't is I start to uh, I start up. to develop SIBO. Mm. Again, and so mm. I'm in this constant struggle. Although right now I'm doing pretty well, but I still take this. So I'll take like five or six of these after a meal. So there you go. There. After wait, wait, five or six after every meal. After after usually lunch and dinner. 
So ten of those a day? Yeah, but they're small. It's not a big deal. Okay. Yeah, what, don't okay. worry about that. Okay. Well, so we just got pills hey, we me, just dude. got started. We're already at ten pills. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and then this <laughs> is moved to the powders. This is Paleo Valley's Neuro Effect. So it's one of their. Supplements. Oh, how do you like that? I haven't tried that. I've been trying it. I've been taking it consistently. So I have it in here, so I can remember to take it and try it out. Yeah. And I think I like it. I think I am noticing that um, I've got I'm a little bit sharper. Hmm. So it's got it's got much you know compounds and things in there that help with brain function. Okay, how so, different? Because I know one of our our favorites is Organifi's Pure. How different? Right. Is it from that? You know, it's di different ingredients. So okay. it's, oh, it is completely. Yeah, different. it's got some different ingredients. Okay. So, I'll have yeah. to try that. Then. So you can use them both. Okay. Like I would. <laughs> <laughs> use them both combo it and then this so this right here actually i gave some of these to justin it's over the weekend purple bottle and he likes them oh yeah what is it's that? got an embarrassing name by the way I, I asked you for that and then courtney ordered them for me yeah what is like, it she did so so if you have erectile dysfunction no, i'm just yeah. kidding. No, so here's the deal <laughs> hey man you're not so supposed he, to disclose so here's that. the deal if you have uh, ibs or gut issues mm -hmm. sometimes it's due to uh bacteria backup in the gut and so you can do is you could take natural antimicrobials so this has peppermint oil, ginger, fennel um, uh, oil in these capsules. You take it 30 minutes before you eat. And so essentially when you eat, you don't get this bad bacteria that can cause problems. So I'll take this about 15 to 30 minutes before I eat a meal. How many of those pills? Uh, one. Okay. Yeah, one before. But I gave some to Justin too when he had that sandwich. What did you think? Oh, it totally worked. It oh was, wow! Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it, uh, yeah I didn't get any acid. And how, how, so how much different is that than like taking like a probiotic? Totally different. Okay, it's totally Probiotic different. Probiotic are beneficial bacteria. These are antimicrobials. These, you, you take them and they kill bacteria. Okay. So it's like a natural- Got it. Antibiotic, got essentially. It. essentially. All right. Then the next thing I got here is my Ned hemp oil, um, which uh, I love. Uh, I love taking this uh, during the day. It's good for- kind of chills me out. Uh, if I take it with caffeine, I get this really, really good focus. Yeah, that's the move. Yeah, so I'll use this maybe a few, maybe maybe two or three times a week. Would you say you use the regular hemp, which you're holding right now, yes. more than the sleep? Yeah, in fact, I have uh, two two of the sleep bottles in this plastic bag because they are oil, so mm. I have those. And I'll take that at yeah. night uh, for sleep sometimes. If you don't and use it's just, them, you pass them over it's your just, boy. It's yeah, just, I know you jumped on the last I know, last batch I, I got here. I, 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 I'm with early. you. Once I, got, once I got introduced to sleep, I use the sleep like 90% of the time. It's, I rarely use so good for me the hemp anymore because I you were using it for sleep. I was with. I was mostly yeah. using it to calm me down at night to get a better night's rest. And once they came out with that sleep blend, dude, that's like another it's, level. I started taking it an hour before I go to bed yes. too, so that yes. way, yeah, because I before I would do it like you know 10, 20 minutes beforehand. Dude, the com not as good. The combo with the the sleep and making sure you have your blue blockers on at night, like I'll, like it's just powerful. Said, I go to I do dinner. I do dinner like around seven o'clock or so or seven thirty ish, and then right after that, I'm mm -hmm. I'm taking that. And I have my blue bar, and I'm telling you, about an hour later, I'm like yeah. yawning and like ready it's for. It's so bed. nice because you're just like, oh man, I'm really tired. I'm just gonna go to bed now. Yeah, yeah, I, like th I, yeah. That's why I save it, so I don't use it every night because I feel like if I do, then it maybe loses effect. So I'll use it like a couple yeah. nights a week, and I'll get like I'll sleep hard. I sleep mm -hmm. and I dream a lot. Do you guys dream a lot when you take it? Uh, yeah. Well, no. I definitely get deep sleep. Yeah, very yeah. very deep. Okay, so there's that, and then uh, I always have some of the Organifi green juice packets with me yeah clutch yeah because uh you know if i don't get vegetables or whatever i'll drink one of these this just it just feels good this is probably one of the more consistent supplements i'll take as long as we've been with organifi i've probably used green juice now there's a lot of controversy around green juices why is that why do some why do some because, people hate on it so much because they'll say things like uh just eat your vegetables no shit <laughs> right? yeah. you know vegetables are superior okay if you if you're trying to drink a green juice because you think it's going to be as good as eating vegetables you're an idiot uh, but if you miss vegetable intake sometimes, which we all do, then these are clutch. Uh, yeah, and also the serving amounts that you should probably be ingesting, like uh, Dr. Terry Walls, like like her standards. Like, good luck trying to like cram that many yeah, vegetables six. in a day. Yeah. You know? Yes, totally. So, and then you know, uh, if if I don't do like a other like a specialized pre workout or whatever, I'll take caffeine with theanine. So this is just and, and no association with a lot of these brands, by the way. It's just. I like caffeine with theanine. It feels the best. I've talked about this on the podcast. And then if you combine this- I didn't even know they make a, a supplement that actually had it combined. Yeah. We, so we yeah. always used to take them separate. Yeah, you could take them separate or, or if, you know, I, obviously I have a lot of bottles in here. I don't want extra <laughs> bottles in here. So <laughs> I buy it so that it comes like this. And then I'll combine it sometimes with alpha GPC, which gives me the best like focus, the best mm. focus. Now would, you, now, would you do that? You wouldn't do that at the same time you did that. What was the other, uh, the neuro effect from paleo? That's probably too much you're, you're messing with. No, that. it's not too too much. I, oh, have, I have done that. Yeah, that's a good time. Oh, it's not too much. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really, that's a really good time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then the last thing lately, I've been using a lot of the element. This is the Rob Wolf. Uh, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on two times. I, I did it, it again. Last so, are you guys noticing better pumps and stuff like that? I'm, I'm on two. I had a good workout with it so far. So I'm saving I'm my. I'm saving it. my review until I've got enough consistent days to tease it out with other yeah, stuff. We'll but see. So far, so good. I'll tell you what, though. I did the the chocolate one last time, and somebody was like, "Oh, have you tried that in coffee?" And I hear the co- combining it with oh, the cold brew. Is just amazing. did that this morning. It How was, was epic. It, oh, it was okay. so good with nitro. Oh, yeah. my God. That oh, yeah. I saw you and Doug both did that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, super tasty. Yeah. So that's that's basically it. I don't take this stuff. every. The stuff I take the most consistently is the gut stuff because I eat uh, every single day. Green juice would probably be the, the other one. Um, the Ned is just the best hemp oil uh, product ever. I've used, I've used uh, probably 30 different hemp CBD type products. And nothing compares to hemp. Uh, excuse me, uh, to Ned in terms of the effects. Mm-hmm. But that's pretty much it. Most of the stuff I just carry it with me because I'm a weirdo. So yeah. thanks for calling me out, you fucks. <laughs> hey, that's what we're here for. Next question is from Dan Yo Twelve Twelve. Can I build mass only with fifty pound dumbbells? Ooh, good question. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. You can. Now, I guess the, the the real question is, what happens when it gets so strong? That the fifty pound dumbbells start to feel light. Huh. Try, only, try, a, try a six second negative and get back to me. I was yeah. just gonna say, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a whole there's, lot of variables we can play with. There's many ways to make a weight heavier. Remember, your body doesn't really know you're lifting fifty pounds; it just knows the tension. One way to make a weight heavier is to add weight. Like, yeah. duh. Uh, the other way is to go slower, change your form. Yeah, I submit. Hold the squeeze. Yeah, hold it in certain ho- positions. Hold the stretch. I did this uh, last week with squats. I, I, you know, I had some weight on the bar, and rather than going heavier, I just held the bottom position for f- for five seconds. I love so I yeah. love that. Right. I, so one of my favorite exercises, and it's about fifty pounds, is what I do this with: is uh, incline alternating dumbbell press, and I'm hold. I either hold at the bottom or I hold at the top, and I. I switch that up you know mm-hmm. so i'll do an isometric hold at the top where i'm squeezing my chest where the other one's going down and i'm alternating back and forth like that or i'll do the opposite where i'm holding down in the stretch position and then but I'm you're pressing. maintaining tension exactly you're not like resting yeah it. no it's isometric mm-hmm. so i'm so you're getting that we talk about the benefits of that and a lot of people don't include that in their workout that's a great way to include in your workout and a great reason to do it is because you don't have the weight to scale up so interesting story right so during world war ii there weren't a ton of gyms but there was definitely there was at the time there was a developing muscle building culture where you had you know you know some guys that would like to lift weights to develop and build their body especially in southern california and some places on the east coast during world war ii there was they were rationing steel right they needed it to produce planes and bombs and and weapons and so it was hard to get weights that were heavier than i don't remember what the weight was but a certain amount it was just too expensive too hard you couldn't get it so at the time, the bodybuilders started experimenting with super slow motion. These call it super slow motion reps, mm-hmm. where they'd go really slow. So you got these guys that are used to lifting 200 or 300 pounds. Now they, they, all they have is 100 pounds. What can they possibly do? That's exactly what they did. They slowed the reps down. And what came out of that was the understanding that you could develop your body with these different novel ways of training. And it became a whole form, a whole way of, of exercise. Oh, there's still, there's a lot of camps around that way of training. I oh, yeah. So I, I'll never forget, this was my, I want to say third, second or third boss when I was just getting into training. And he, he was uh, probably 25. I'm only like 20, 19, 20 at this time. And uh, I remember he's great, great shape. In fact, he competed. Um, but the way he trained was su- this super slow technique. That everything he did was that. Mm-hmm. So he would take a weight, and he would. I mean, he would just go as slow as possible. And sometimes it'd only be three reps, and he would come. It would take it, the muscle to failure that mm-hmm. way under control. And that guy looked phenomenal, dude. Yeah. And that's how he trained. I, and bef- up until that point, I never kind of bought into the. I wasn't doing any isometric stuff. I was never really paying attention to the eccentric motion and going really slow. After meeting him, that changed my training, and I started to play around with it, and then I started to dig well, a little you, bit deeper. Yeah, on. you guys are talking about slow and ice. You can also like move really fast with them. You can you can right. do dumbbell snatches. You can do cleans. You can do a lot of things where you're getting fast twitch activation uh, with those fifty pounds, and you know get a whole new stimulus. Oh, completely. It's just again, there's so many ways to make a weight uh, feel heavy. You don't need to add weight uh, every single time. You look at uh, guys in prison when they start, especially in California, when they took 
took weights out right uh and they couldn't lift anymore they would experiment with stuff like this and it was like and the guards a lot of the guards were like damn what do we do now well, yeah, because and, these dudes are still jacked oh and imagine and uh, yeah. you know i'll throw out some cool stuff like uh take a 50 pound dumbbell chest press and then superset that with explosive push-ups yeah. exactly right afterwards i mean there's a lot of cool things you know uh, katrina and i were we're getting ready to move soon and so we're actually ordering a prx for the house because we'll be far from the gym here and uh, I told her just to get up to 50 pound dumbbells. Exactly what she's like, you know, let's get some dumbbells too. And I'm like, ah, you know what? We don't need a whole set of them. I got plenty at the studio. And as long as I got up to 50s there, I know I can get a great workout still. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this for, for when you do your really heavy training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, it's funny that, you know, we were talking about a question like this. And that was something that we literally were talking about last night about only getting those. You know, sometimes I do better when I, I, I this is all I have to work with. Totally. It, yeah. Versus knowing that there's a bunch of weight and the design. Because I want to lift heavy. It's just, I think it's... it's. There it's, seems to be more intent around your workouts that way. Yeah. I, and, and you know what? When you have to move slow and controlled like that because you don't have Your heavier, form's going to be way better. Way better, less likely to get hurt and injured. And most people need to throw that type of training in there every once in a while. So, no, there's a lot of value to this. Next question is from Chell's Fit Diary. How should someone adjust their macros and caloric intake as they hit plateaus for weight loss? How do you know when it's time to make an adjustment before hitting a plateau? Mm. Uh, okay, so calories you adjust when the weight loss uh, stops. So if your weight loss stops, you're not burning any more body fat. Typically, and there's a lot of different ways to do this, uh, you would just reduce the calories even more. Now, obviously, you can see where this tends to end up. If you keep doing that, uh, eventually you might get to your goal, but now you're stuck at you know super low calories. So I tend to stagger this. I'll cut the calories, then I'll throw in a you know, few days of higher calories. This tends to stoke the metabolism a little bit mm. and prevents that what's called metabolic uh, adaptation. But in, in, in plain uh, English, you would, you would reduce the calories when the weight loss stops. And if you're trying to gain... You would bump them when uh, when the weight gain stops. As far as macros are concerned, this is where I like to have a lot of fun. Um, you can keep you know two thousand calorie low carb diet versus a two thousand calorie high carb diet feels very different on the body. Feels very different in your gut. This is where you can start to have uh, a lot of fun. I like to do this with myself sometimes. Not change the calories change the macros, see how I feel. And sometimes uh, this actually triggers, uh, you know, more effects in my body. Um, so that's macros, totally different from calories. You can keep the calories the same, adjust the macros, uh, calories adjust according to how your body's responding. This is actually, this is a really good question, but it's also a really hard one to answer without a lot of uh, stuff that I'd want to ask this person. And the reason why is because I, if I decide which direction I'm going to go with my calories with somebody, even if your goal is like fat loss, weight loss, right? That's your main goal. I, I might actually go up right here um, if you're already really low. So for example, let's just say, um, and you know, I'm helping somebody with their nutrition right now and she weighs about 145 to 150. And, you know, we were just coming off of a cut not that long ago. And we did, you know, she was up to, I think I had her up to about 25 originally. We hit a plateau. I dropped her down to uh, 22. She had another plateau. We dropped down to 1800, hit another plateau. Now I went the other direction. And the reason why I went the other direction is because now I'm getting to a place where I, I want her to be able to eat 2000 plus calories when we get her body to where she wants to sustain it because that's a that's a realistic amount of food that she can sustain for a really long time if you get in the game of every time you hit a plateau you you drop calories you drop calories you drop calories eventually you get to this place of eating 1300 calories and you feel like you're starving and yeah you might have reached close to your goal or hit even hit your goal but then you're at a place where you're like i can't that's not enough food for me and you eventually go back up so sometimes when uh, we have a, a plateau like this, even with someone who's weight loss, what I just recently did to this girl is I said, okay, we're going to bump your calories. I'm going to add 250 calories a day and let's go in and we're going to move your training into a strength phase or I'll switch the programming that we're currently doing. And what our goal now is let's build some strength. Let's build some muscle. Let's do that for a few weeks and then we'll go back and we'll cut back down on calories. And so it really depends on where this person's metabolism is. If I if I would give them the recommendation of cutting calories or actually potentially increasing calories. Totally. That's really good information. Um, as far as protein is concerned, that's probably the one macro I manipulate the least, totally. but I still manipulate mm -hmm. it. If I have someone that's high protein consistently for months, 
Sometimes I'll throw in a low protein day. And what I notice with that is it, it almost resensitizes the body to protein. Some studies suggest that this actually might happen where if you eat a lot of protein all the time, your body becomes a little less efficient with it. So it uses more of it for energy, less of it for muscle. You throw in like a fast or something like that for a day or two, throw protein back in your diet and all of a sudden the protein becomes more, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, anabolic. But the fat and carbs are the ones I'll manipulate most regularly. Next question is from Connor Flynn. We often talk a lot about people not having enough mobility, but what if you have the opposite problem and your joints are actually hypermobile? How do you correct this issue? I always feel I feel like we get this exact same question like once every about three or four three months. Three or four months, yeah. When we're talking about mobility, 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 yeah. there's always somebody who's hypermobile yeah. uh, that ends up asking. They this can question. get in these positions super easy, but uh, yeah, might not feel as stable uh, as we'd like. So that's, that's it. That's it right there. I, I want to change the terminology here. So when we talk about mobility, what we're talking about is not just your ability to get a, a, do, do a full range of motion. But it's to do their full range of motion, have control, strength, and stability within it. Mm -hmm. When we talk about mobility, that's what we're referring to. Yeah, this person thinks is confusing it with flexibility. Well, not no instability. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. with this person has long ranges of motion, so they're able, they're super flexible, and they're also have no strength or stability. So they're so hypermobile in this sense. What they're trying, what they're communicating is instability with long ranges of motion. I've worked with clients like this, yeah. and it's a totally different challenge. Oh, yeah. Now, the, the key with this is to increase your strength and not go to your end ranges of motion because you have such bad stability. So if I have someone like this who's got this hypeless long range of motion, they're unstable, I'm not going to have them do ass to grass squats. Even though they could sit down there, they're so unstable, they're going to hurt themselves. I'll actually have this person will put weight on their back um, that they can control, and I'll have them stop just below 90 degrees, hold it for a second, and then come back up. Mm. Try and build strength in a shorter range of motion. Once I feel strong and stable in that range of motion, then I lengthen it, and then I lengthen it. And over time, now they're doing their full range of motion with strength. Yeah, this is where, I mean, I've had some clients like this, some gymnastic uh, you know, clients that have come in with like hypermobility and um, what we focus on the most is is really being able to access this muscular tension to be able to really ramp that up and uh, you know with isometrics or with like kin stretch type movements where you know it, it'll it'll challenge it'll basically put you in some of these extreme kind of ranges of motion. But now how do you get out of that? How do you, how can you um, you know squeeze and, and connect to the muscle to to gather the strength to be able to really stabilize around the joint and feel like you know you have that strength and control. Um, and, and so the, just, just gradually sort of taking them through different angles, uh, you know, with their joints, but making sure that we're really irradiating, we're getting a lot of this, uh, you know, muscle tension to respond, uh, and then start to load, but really having to make sure that the, you know, the joints feel like they're stabilized and secure, uh, before they, they really go through that. Now, is this an area where you guys would agree that you see value in some instability training, right? where you have somebody who may be on foam pads that are going in a deep or dyna disc and are squatting really deep on on these on unstable uh, environment environment or tools in order to get them to build a little bit depends of depends how bad the stability yeah. is I, I actually i worked with this lady who she what she had no background in dance she had no background in stretching she was just born this way and she was also very weak that's by the way strength is the solution to this problem so she was weak but super flexible and her stability was so bad that if I put her in a deep squat, I mean, I, I felt like if I pushed her the wrong way, her joint would have come out of socket, right? So yeah. with her, it was short ranges of motion yeah. and strength and, and stable. We had to be stable because she had such poor – she was so weak that if we did anything on an unstable surface – it was like an injury. Mm -hmm. She was like a, like a like a noodle, right? Like yeah, a baby yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Like in fact, in fact, that's a good example. Babies are are have long ranges of motion, no strength. Like if you ever take a baby's feet, put it by their head, move them around, like super flexible, super obviously no stability. If you if a baby tried to support any weight, they would yeah. obviously injure themselves. Yeah, little gumbies. Yeah. So this is so strength. Strength is get strong, but don't use your full range of motion. You have you don't have enough strength to support full ranges of motion, and you're asking for problems. So this is one of the few cases, I would say, 
limit your range of motion, get strong in that short range of motion. Then when you feel strong in that short range of motion, now extend it like a yeah, couple take more it inches. incrementally. That's I, it. I, you guys mentioned gymnasts. I actually, so I trained quite a few people like this, but it was all, you know who it was for me were like your hardcore yoga people. Yes. Oh, if you were, if you, I got quite a few that were, you know, they just love yoga. They've done yoga their whole life, mm -hmm. but never strength trained before. So they were like super flexible but they had no strength and control when I take them through like a squat or a lunge or a basic exercise. So that's where I found it more common. I, those were the clients that I think ended up having that. Totally. You see a lot of mm -hmm. hip, uh, a li lot of hip problems in those types of practitioners. Now yeah. I'll argue that proper yoga, you, when you do it properly, it actually will increase your stability with the ranges of motion. But the way that sometimes people do yoga here, especially in America is they do these yin classes where they sit in these long static stretches or they get in poses and mm -hmm. they allow their joints to support them rather than staying Yeah, they active. relax and it's more meditative. The goal is for them to get to a range of motion, not to you know increase their strength throughout the range of yeah, motion. Yeah, because if you take a yoga like from a really good instructor, they'll tell you, like when you get in a pose, they'll say, draw your energy in or push out. What they literally mean is activate your muscles. Don't just let your joints support you. Because yeah. if you do that, you get flexible, yeah. but then you have no strength and you end up developing uh, instability. Look, thanks to everybody watching us on YouTube and listening to the podcast uh, on their phone or on their in their car. Um, Mind Pump is available on lots of different platforms, uh, YouTube, uh, Spotify, um, uh, Apple Podcasts. We're all over the place. Also, we have a lot of free information. So if you want to read more stuff about training your body, about diet, about training a specific part of your body, we even have information for personal trainers. Go to mindpumpfree.com. It's a library of guides. You can download all of them. They cost absolutely nothing. Nothing. Go check them out. And then finally, if you want to find us all individually, come to Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Wrong. You can look at, you can speculate on what's going to happen in the future and how it's going to suck. No, no, no. Don't do that. Just literally take the energy, it's just energy, and, and just shift it about three feet over here and start looking at how you can make this work for you. It's just